What I'm about to make today is something that I could have never imagined myself making only a few years ago. Uh, I'm making a lobster bisque today. All right, let's go on three. One, two, three. Here we go. What the hell is this? Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking, Volume 2. That's where the recipe is today. So the bisque is a rich, thick, highly seasoned soup of pureed shellfish. Undoubtedly, the bisque came into being because it's as easy as well as an elegant way to eat crustaceans. And then we go into like a whole bunch of pages on how to, you know, kill and cut open a lobster. You've seen me with a live lobster once before. And uh, yeah, my kill count is currently standing at one. <laughs> it's not an enjoyable experience at all, but it's something that has to be done if you enjoy eating something like the lobster bisque. So yeah, you gotta step up and do it. What I got here is two one and a half pound lobsters. Because this is such a labor intensive recipe, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna have enough bisque at the end of it. So yeah, it's double trouble today. Lobster one, lobster two. I'm not gonna name them because that is, you're gonna get attached to them. That's not a good idea. So let's just make this as quick and painless as possible because we just don't know, do we, if they feel pain or not. So I got the lobsters in the freezer right now for like four to seven-ish minutes. I just wanna make sure that they're completely knocked out before I get to this next step. So when they're in the freezer for that amount of time, they become like sleepy, like dazed, um, sluggish. That's what happens. And it's just gonna make the rest of the job that much easier because they're gonna be out and I'm gonna be able to, well, you know. The Grim Reaper has called. Okay, they're right below the eyes. There's a spot right here. It's like it's a little mark. It's like an X almost. X marks the spot for the knife. And then I'm gonna just press firmly down and cut right through to the cutting board. So I need to go this way. All right, let's go on three. One, two, three. Whoa, He's still kind of moving. I, this should have, okay. I mean, he's, it's dead now, that's for fucking sure. Nestled in the head on one side of the lobster is a pouch an inch long and a three quarter inch in diameter, which is the stomach sack. <laughs> it's, it's kind of still twitching, which is unfortunate, but I don't know what else I can do besides cut it in half and take out its insides. The stuff that kind of looks like brain, that's kind of green, grayish, that's the tamale. Let's take that out because Julia always has something in mind for that. <sighs> so the green stuff is uncooked roe. All right, so tamale comes out and I guess this was a female because of the roe. Uh, the green roe has to come out. So I'll just leave that off to the side with the tamale. All right, I'll be honest, that wasn't easier the second time or anything. That was just as challenging. And um, yeah, I don't think that will ever be easy. Off goes the tail, claw off. And it's probably safe to take the elastic off. Jesus Murphy, did you see the airtime on that? Separated the claws, chest halves, and then the tails. So first things first, I need a mirepoix. Carrots, onions, celery. I'm using the big boy today. Get the heat on that going. Add a knob of butter. In goes the mirepoix. Let's get these going for six to eight minutes. Just hanging out in here. The recipe's already confusing the hell out of me, but I think I need to use this pot for something upcoming. So I have to take out the vegetables, move them to another pan because it's gonna be like a recurring thing with these pans and I wanna make sure I'm using the right stuff. So, cook the veggies in this dish. I'm only on step one, preliminaries, and I'm already confused as f I'm just gonna turn the vegetables off for now so I can focus on the next steps. Tomatoes, peeled, seeded, juiced, and diced. So take time out of your busy schedule to peel the tomatoes. Next up, I gotta seed these tomatoes. How do I get the seeds out? Oh, okay. 
Tomatoes have been peeled, seeded, juiced, and diced. Film the bottom of this with one eighth inch of oil. One eighth inch of oil. A couple tablespoons. That's like two and a little for good luck. Moderately high heat until the oil is hot, but it's not smoking. Add the lobster chest cut side down. Cut side down. The legs and the chest half. Do not crowd it, saute in two batches. It's like friggin' popcorn with the oil right now. And then I just gotta keep turning them around until the shells are a deep dark red, four to five minutes in total. The color is important as it's the shells that tint the soup. So I don't think I'm supposed to add the tails and the claws into this just yet. That's further down the road. It just says the chest halves. So I'm gonna pause on this for now because this is the really good meat and I don't wanna overcook this. Everything that I just removed, I'm gonna add it back in. Lower heat slightly. Okay, salt and pepper. Six tablespoons of cognac. Uh, no, this is brandy, I have brandy. Uh, but I think they're like interchangeable when it comes to cooking so we're good because all I have is brandy. Six tablespoons. One, two, three. Ignite by shaking pan vigorously and tilting into a heat source or use a lighted match or my friggin' blowtorch. Stand back. <laughs> Shake it vigorously until the flames have died down. <laughs> Generous half pint, 236 milliliters of a dry white wine. I'm using a vermouth. Vermouth me. That's two tablespoons of roughly chopped up tarragon, fresh tarragon, and one bay leaf. Add in the other ingredients. What the f The mirepoix from step one. Peel, seeded, juiced, diced tomatoes. Large pinch of cayenne pepper. Booyah. Ooh, yeah. One clove of garlic, mashed. It never gets all the garlic, does it? These things aren't that reliable, are they? And an extra small clove of garlic for good luck. A late addition to the party, but I'm gonna add in the tamale from the lobster. Although I don't know what to do about this, the roe. Should I add that in there too? I'm not sure. Go down with the ship. In go the claws. And the tail. And that's gonna simmer for 20 minutes. Okay, so yeah, Julia makes a point of saying that she doesn't use a full lobster, let alone two full lobsters for her bisque. Considering the price of lobsters and the pureed nature of a bisque, we think it is a waste to use the whole lobster. Well, we suggest that only legs and the chest for the bisque and tails, claws, and tamale for a splendid main dish. I didn't go that route. So that being said, she hasn't made it clear at all when to use claws and the tail for this dish. So I'm just assuming, I'm just assuming. I should have probably added them in when I added the other part of the lobster, but I didn't. So now I'm just adding it in now and fingers crossed that everything works out in the end. D -d 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 Before proceeding, you may wish to start the rice in the next step so that it will be done by the time you were through here. Okay. So let's figure out the rice. Two ounces of rice, which is 57 grams, which is a quarter cup, which is freshly made fish stock. This is from the same place that I picked up the lobsters. It's called the Lobster Place. And this has garlic, celery, onion, fish bones, white wine, peppercorn, thyme, tarragon, basil, bay leaf. I need quite a bit of it. I need a one and a quarter pint. F off with your measurement. 1.25 pints is 591.47 milliliters. Okay, so I'm just gonna abandon all measurements that I'm using because I'm using grams, ounces, pounds, milliliters, cups. I don't even know what's going on anymore. So uh, if you're curious about like the amount of each thing that I'm using, I'll have it in the description. And it's in this, this blasted book. So I need around 600 milliliters of fish stock, which I don't have. <laughs> okay. So if I do 400 and 400. So I'm just gonna add an equal amount of beef stock. And yeah, people are gonna give me shit about using beef stock from the carton like this. Okay, at least it's organic. The recipe is saying add this much liquid. 
and then I have this much rice, which isn't a lot. So I think I'm just gonna trust the book because my brain has melted. In my favorite saucepan, I'm gonna add the fish stock and the beef stock. Bring that to a boil. Sprinkle in the rice. Stir it around once, just once. So I'm gonna turn that down to a simmer for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes simmering, this thing is ready to go. Oh, it smells heavenly. Remove the pieces of the lobster from the cooking sauce. Nothing goes to waste, so make sure I grab all the meat and keep the shells. Okay, that is freaking hot. It's really hot, but if you wanna get done, you gotta go for it. So all the shells go into a separate bowl and I'm just gonna put the meat aside. Hot. I have these heavy duty scissors that just cut right through the shell like it's no problem. For the legs, I love this rolling pin method. See, I have a leg here and I just kinda, out comes the meat. This is my new favorite method of opening up these claws. Towel on top, rolling pin. It's done. It's done. Now Julia says you should have one cup of meat, although I have much more than that, and that's because I was using the shells and the tails, uh, and she was just using the chest halves. So uh, yeah, that's normal, guys. I got more meat. <laughs> Puree the cooking sauce went through the food mill. What f***ing, oh, this stuff? These are the only cooking juices I can think of. There's not much to be perfectly frank with you. Whatever juice is in here is gonna reveal itself to me very shortly. Chop shells into half inch pieces and reserve in a bowl for step six. Oh, oh, by the way, we're on step three. I'm gonna chip this thing if I use it through the shells, so I'm just not gonna cut the shells. I have a new knife coming, I just don't have it yet. That one's gonna be used for shells. So this rice that I made is all ready to go. It's just been hanging out until it's special moment. And I need like a, my 500th bowl of the day. I'm gonna strain the liquid from the rice. The rice juices are gonna go off to the screen for a second. All right, so I got my blender. So the rice goes in along with half the lobster meat. So it says keep half of the meat. So, all right, I'll keep the, the tails and some of the cloth. This is the cooking sauce from the pan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add this in. Puree this, adding a little of the cooking liquid from the rice if the mixture is too thick. Definitely needs some juice in there. A little more rice juice. Yeah, I used all the rice juice. Back into the rice saucepan, I have to add this puree. I don't think I have to clean out the saucepan. Now we're moving on to step six. Shellfish butter for final enrichment, colon, lobster butter. I can see the finish line. Step eight, step seven, we're here. Step six. And this is what I was cooking my lobster in. It's still got all the, the cooking stuff in it. And uh, I'm just gonna keep it as is. Now this ain't a Julia Child recipe without uh, butter and lots of it. That's three ounces, over 80 grams of butter. <laughs> oh dear. Add it into the pot. The butter's bubbling. I'm gonna add in all the lobster shells. Here we go. Move these all around in the butter and saute them up with moderate heat. Add some salt, pepper, mix them all around for two to three minutes. Great that you get to use every single part of the lobster. After a few minutes, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of brandy or cognac, whatever you got. I gotta cook it like this until all the liquid has been evaporated. Once it's been a few minutes, take the shells off the heat. We gotta get the blender again. Oi, hello. Lobster shells go into the blender. That's gonna be really f***ing loud.
flicking switch on and off and scraping shells down into blades as necessary. So I think that's done, but I'm not 100% sure. Like, I don't know how far I'm supposed to push that because that is the loudest thing I've ever heard. And it's like a friggin' jet engine. I'm just gonna wake up the entire block with that because it's late, because I'm just, I keep going and going. Is that done? I don't know when it's done. Like, how could that be done? Scrape puree into sieve. A million dollar question is, is this gonna go through a sieve? I mean, you're supposed to add all the rice cooking liquid into that, but I already used it for the other thing. So I was all out of options. I had to add water. I think it worked though. Trying to shove this shit through the sieve is just like, this is hell. All I know is I'm supposed to have two tablespoons plus the remaining lobster butter, however much is remaining. So I have more than two tablespoons, but I don't know how much I'm supposed to have out of this. Like, how much lobster butter? Still little pieces of shell that kind of snuck through the sieve the first time. Just to ensure that I get this as smooth as possible, I'm passing it through a second time as tedious as it is, but there's still little, little, little chunks of shell in it. It's rather kind of like unpleasant. So I'm gonna heat it up. Maybe I add a little bit of butter in. Little tiniest little pieces of shell in this. And I've passed it through the sieve three times. It's been blended. Okay, you're not gonna believe it, but it's the next day. I was just like on the verge of a breakdown. <laughs> I was so confused and tired and frustrated that I had to just like stop what I was doing. Like cease all activity, get the hell out of the kitchen. Of course, after I cleaned up for like an hour. Oh, it's the next day, why are you wearing the same clothes? It's because this stuff smells like lobster, so I just figure I just keep wearing. So I really wanted to just like clear my head for like freaking five seconds and read more into the book and then start going online and like looking into certain things with the lobster bisque to like truly understand what the hell I was trying to make, which was this. What the hell is this? First of all, I broke my friggin' sieve. You take a bite of this, it does not taste like lobster butter, or whatever the hell lobster butter should taste like. What this tastes like is just like a pasty, grainy, it's like you're biting down on little granules of lobster shell. It's a miserable experience. It's probably using way too much lobster shell, not enough butter, like the ratio is off. But I mean, the book does say, use the bowl of lobster shells and three ounces of butter, which is exactly what I did. Do you think this is what she had in mind? I do not want to risk this being wrong and screwing up the whole dish. I have to abandon the lobster butter. It's like I need rice cooking liquid, which I have no more of that. And I need a dirty blender, which I don't have that anymore. The sieve needs to be dirty. The casserole pan needs to be dirty. It's all clean. So I'm just gonna skip that step. Move on to the lobster garnish. I need a small frying pan and then one ounce of the lobster butter, which I'm not using, just regular butter. So once the butter in my pan is bubbling, I'm gonna add in my lobster meat. Now I only want to use one half of the lobster tail. The other parts of the lobster tail, I'm gonna save for a rainy day. And then pour in remaining meat that I've chopped up. Two minutes, I'm gonna saute this stuff on a, like a medium heat. All right, I do not want the butter to burn. Turn the heat down a bit. Two tablespoons of brandy. Oops, that's one. Cook until it's been evaporated. Put that aside. It's time for this. With the nice looking bisque here, with the soup, with the bisque. I don't know how smart this is because this is such a nice smooth looking bisque, but in goes some of the lobster meat. Is this a wise idea? Very slowly bring it up to a simmer. I don't want to screw up on the very last few steps. Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. I'm not a big fan of like crazy amount of cream, especially when this bisque tastes so good on its own, but I think you need just a little bit of cream in your lobster bisque. So I'm gonna add, um, this is like 60 milliliters. I'm gonna add just a little, see how it goes. And if I wanna add more, well then, yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll add a little more. So I did end up using all 60 milliliters. I don't think it made it too creamy. I mean, I think this is pretty damn freaking good. Just needs a little more salt, honestly, just a little. Maybe just a little crank or two of pepper. I'm so ready for this that it's not even funny anymore. It was never funny to begin with. Oh, 
I'm just gonna pour this into whatever the hell bowl I have. I'm gonna have to pour in more right now just for the photo op, but I can assure you I'm not gonna be eating all this at once. I just wanna make this bowl look pretty, so what's the best way to do that? Shake it around so it smooths it out a bit. Finally, I want that lobster tail right in the center. I hope it's st Please float parsley all over. Order up. Mm, 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 mm. It's got these rich, deep lobster flavors in there. It is a wonderful lobster bisque, and I love lobster bisque. Add this one to the list of bisques that I have enjoyed. <laughs> now, do I think that I could have found uh, an easier way to get to the end of the rainbow? Yes. I would say that this recipe is kind of complicated, like to a fault. Like it's needlessly kind of complicated at times. I don't think it needs to be. <laughs> I'm so happy this turned out. There's so much on the line just with like the ching, 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 ching. This had to turn out for me to be able to sleep tonight. So um, I'm thankful that it did. It's delicious. I love it. I must say how happy I am that I did not add that lobster butter. I ate enough for like two or three or four people. So I think I had a fair share of that. It was really tasty. I'll save that for later and I'm done with the video. Right here, scrolling by on the screen are my Patreon supporters. Huge shout out to them who are supporting this show in a very big way, helping me out big time. And there's a link in the description if you wanna check that out. But this was Jamie and Julia, bon appetit. Au revoir.